Hello everybody, this is Steve Grizzetti, your man from Movie Picks and the author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in part two of our eight-part series of basic training with Adobe Premiere Elements. In part one, we looked at the Quick View workspace. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at how to start a project in Premiere Elements and why starting your project with the right project or the right sequence settings can make for a much more successful project and editing experience. Now we're going to be working in the advanced view workspace for the rest of these tutorials, but don't let the word advanced scare you. It's not advanced. It's not, you don't have to be super professional to use it. It's simply a more advanced, more complicated workspace. It's a place where you have more tracks of audio, more tracks of video, and a much deeper tool set to work with. But let's start a new project and get things going here in our advanced workspace. To start a new project, you simply go to the file menu and select new project. And this opens up our new project option panel. You'll notice that we have a number of project presets here, including three different aspect ratios. There's the landscape aspect ratio, which is wider than it is tall. This is the aspect ratio you have for your television set, for your camcorder. It is wider than it is tall, 16 by nine. There's also portrait. This is the video you get when you hold your phone upright. It's taller than it is wide. And you can see as with landscape, it comes in a number of resolutions. And then there's square, which quite often is used in social media sites. And if you aren't quite sure what aspect ratio your social media site uses, you can always just go to the social drop down and select preset that fits your particular site. You'll notice over here in the lower left-hand corner of this panel, it says for selected project preset on this project. This is important because the program is designed to automatically match your project settings or your sequence settings to the media you add to your project. That's because it's the most efficient way to work. But in some cases, like for instance, if you're creating a video for a social media site or one that uses something other than a standard aspect ratio, You'll want to force your project preset on the project. You'll want to force it to become square or upright, no matter what media you're adding to it. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to select the option to create a portrait project. That is a project that is taller than it is wide. I'm not going to check this box, which I normally would do. I'm not going to check the box that says force project preset on the project. And I'm just going to give it a name. We'll call it Carolina friends and click OK. And this creates our project and you notice here in the program monitor that our monitor is taller than it is wide so there is our portrait project. But I'm going to add media to it by clicking on files and folders here on the left and I'm just going to grab a couple of media clips and add them to my project. You notice that in advanced view the media is added to the project assets panel rather than directly to the timeline. Then you add it to the timeline yourself by dragging it from project assets to the timeline in a more professional manner. But I'm just going to grab a clip and you notice these clips are wider than they are tall because these were shot with a camcorder. When I drag them down here to the timeline, you notice that the very first clip I add to the timeline triggers this little clip mismatch warning. The program wants to know, do I want to change my project settings or my sequence settings to match the media settings. If I do that, watch what happens. If I choose change sequence settings, I've lost that portrait project setting and now the project settings or the sequence settings now match my media. The program does this because it's a much more efficient way to work. If your media matches your project settings or your sequence settings, but it may not be what you want. Now you may want something that is shaped taller than wide, or you may want something that is shape squared. In that case, you'll want to make sure you override that by checking that box back here in our new project option panel, remember that, to force the settings on the project. So it's up to you. You can choose the aspect ratio of the uh, project that you want to create, or you can let the program determine it for you based on the media you're adding to it. As for the program itself, you'll notice that we can widen any one of these panels just by dragging on the seam in between the panels. We can make our timeline larger. We can make our program monitor larger. If we open up some of these panels here on the right, we can also widen the panel here. We can even take some of these panels, for instance, the timeline, 
and if I hold down the control key and drag on the timeline it actually becomes a floating panel and if I've got two monitors that I'm editing with I can move this over to one of the monitors and kind of create my own workspace with it. If I want to restore the program to its original layout all I need to do is go up to the window menu here at the top of the program and select restore workspace and everything snaps back to where it was. But those are the basics of the program and those are the basics of creating a project, starting your project, and even adding media to your project here in advanced view. Now in part three, in our next session, we're gonna take a look at the timeline itself and how we build out a movie by assembling clips on the timeline. That's part three of our eight part basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements. Hope to see you then.